Hi everyone, this is David and welcome to week one of writing 394, Advanced Business Writing. In this uh, week one video, what I want to do is just briefly review your assignment instructions. I find that giving a video and audio reading of them kind of helps clarify. If after watching the video you still have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me for any explanations or clarification that I can provide. There's nothing more frustrating than knowing you have an assignment but not being completely sure exactly what it is that you have to do. So let's please make sure that we get these assignment requirements entirely worked out in a really clear way. Okay, so here we are on our home page. What you'll want to do is to, after reading any class announcements of course, is to click on content. And if you don't already have week one selected, you simply go over here and click on week one and that will show the week one materials. As you can see, uh, first up is read. Now each one of these instructions contains a verb that tells you exactly what you have to do read, watch, and respond are the three verbs that you'll see most often. Read something, watch something, and the only time that you have to post something to be evaluated is when you see the word respond. So I hope that helps clarify things. Now on your read for week one, this is simply an overview of what we're going to be doing in week one. And uh, it tells you that you're first going to deal with a two-part video called Say Hello to the New Literacy and Respond in a Discussion Board Format. Then you're going to do a sub-module called Project 1 Preparation and we'll be going over that in just a moment. The things that you'll be turning in on the Discussion Board are your bullet list for Project 1 and we'll be discussing these in advance but I wanted to put them as many places as I, as I could to make it clear exactly what it is that you have to turn into the discussion board this week regarding your Project 1. Okay so here you're being told to watch something so let's click on that and what you're watching is these two videos right here and they have to do with an introduction to the new literacy. Uh, the new literacy is simply a word that is used to reference the kind of new environment that we're in as we make this transition between print literacy and visual literacy that has been brought on by the digital age and the internet revolution our writing is becoming more and more like what we're seeing on the web as the two kind of merge and that is what is meant by the new literacy. So here are your instructions. After viewing the videos please participate in the discussion board following the instructions in the thread below and you're going to be posting at least one substantive follow-up to a classmate in that discussion board. But first you watch these two videos. Okay let's take a breadcrumb back. After you have watched the two videos you then come to this part of week one which is to respond. And this is a discussion board as you can see it is highlighted and it says a discussion topic so you know that when you click on that you will be taken to a discussion board and to post on a discussion board and we see that several people have already posted thank you very much Kumar and Mattel uh, and you would simply click on start your own new thread take a breadcrumbs back again okay how are you going to respond well first you're going to respond using what's called step one here. In step one you watch the videos and then you answer these three questions in step one. Question number one, what is your current field and what is the importance of writing in your current field? 
what you're doing right now? What will be the primary writing task you'll be expected to carry out after you've earned your degree and attained perhaps a new position in your field? So there might be some difference between number one, what you're currently doing, and what you will be doing in number two. Now, number three, now that you have outlined your current writing task and your future writing task, you'll answer number three, what writing skills will these tasks require and how prepared do you feel yourself to be right now to accomplish those writing tasks. In step two, you're going to post your response to the new literacy. You're going to be answering this question right here. What is the new literacy and what will be its potential impact on your writing in this course and in your profession? Now, there are going to be some professions in which the new literacy will have more impact than in others. What I'm looking for here is simply a good sense, accurate um, depiction or assessment of how you think the new literacy is going to impact your field as well as a clear definition of the new literacy. And then step three, post at least at once, at, at least one, excuse me, substantive follow-up to a classmate. How do you can answer questions such as, how does your classmate's response confirm your own experience? What insight did you gain by reading your classmate's response? What other examples can you add that relate to what your classmate wrote? So that is your week one assignment board. Now you also have due this week a participation in this submodule right here, communication analysis, analysis preparation submodule. So if you're not seeing the thread, you might need to click on this twirl down arrow right here and you will see the threads for this submodule. And here are the things that you do in the submodule. First, you read the assignment directions. You can find the assignment directions in the assignment folder, but I've also reprinted them here. Now, your first project is called Communication Analysis. It counts for 10% of your overall grade. What it is, it is a report on communication inhibitors or communication interference in your workplace or community. So part one, during the first week of this course, make notes on three to four real life examples of barriers or inhibitors to written and verbal communication occurring in your work environment. The communications you collect can be from documents, conversations, whether face to face or digital conversations, which refers to emails, IMs, or face to face meetings. Then in this part one, you're going to write one to two paragraphs describing the workplace or community setting that you're analyzing, the types of communication in that setting that you're involved with, and other details that you think are important for providing context to this paper. Now, what kind of, what are communication inhibitors and what exactly do we mean? Well, here I think like our 17 communication inhibitors, and you're going to be reading about them in the PDFs that we're going to go over in just a moment. And after you have identified and read about and understand those communication inhibitors, and after you have collected them, in part two of this paper, you're going to define them. And after you have defined them in part three of this paper, you're going to analyze them. You're going to state the communicate. You're going to state the, uh, the communication that you observed in one part of the table. You're going to name the inhibitor in the second part of the table. And then you're going to justify your selection of that inhibitor as a, a way of describing what you observed. And then in part four, you're going to rank your communication's overall effectiveness. So the paper has four parts. Don't worry about that right now. You're going to be provided um, sample papers to follow. We're going to break this assignment down into parts. And the first part you're going to do is the B 
barriers. Here's a, some more introduction to your communication analysis. And that's what I want you to do this week, is to follow these three steps. Review the PDFs, review the assignment instructions, which we just did, and then complete the discussion topic. So what you need to do this week is decide which communication barriers are most affecting communication in your workplace. And those will be three to four of them, the communication barriers that you focus in on your first paper. And then you're going to compile them in a bullet list along with your definitions. So here is here are the bullet list. And this is what you're going to be turning in on this week one discussion board. It's going to be simply a bullet list. And let's take a look at what these bullet lists, the, your bullet list, should consist of. First, you know that this is part two of your paper. Notice that they are in a bullet list, and you can use any kind of bullet that you want. Notice that, first, the audience expectation, and notice that it is formatted, in this case, the actual name of the inhibitor or the actual name of the barrier is italicized. And then comes the definition. And notice that this is a dictionary type definition. It is a general definition. It does not include the, the specific examples of the inhibitors that you observed in your workplace. As you can see, audience expectations dash result when the message that is sent differ from the message that is expected by the audience possibly causing confusion and resentment. So as you see, that is a general definition. And it also tells how the inhibitor audience expectation actually works to cause confusion or inhibition of the communication. So we got competition barriers, connotative meanings of words, faulty level of technicality, lack of clarity, emotional barriers, physical barriers. Again, there are seven here. You only have to do three to four. Here's another student example. You'll see that it's also labeled part two. It has a somewhat different uh, label in that it says communication inhibitors instead of definitions. But you'll notice this is also a bullet list, one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, you only have to have three to four. Here are the actual names of the inhibitors, the barriers, personal inhibitors, perceptual inhibitors, nonverbal inhibitors, emotional inhibitors, physical inhibitors, and forced collaboration inhibitors. And then here is the definition. Now, notice that in this first list, the de each definition began with a verb. Result, occur, are, is caused, is caused, are caused, cause. So that means that all of the definitions are parallel. I use the same parallel grammatical structure. Well, that's not true in the second one. The second one, and the student chose a different way to define. Each one begins with a noun, person not tolerating, the message misunderstood, person's body language, person allowing, person allowing time, inhibitors that occur. So as long as they're parallel, noun, 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 and then on the one above, verb, 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 verb. As long as the definitions are parallel, you're in great shape. OK, let's take a breadcrumbs back to our submodule. Now here are the PDFs that you have to read, 10 barriers to communication, communication barriers, physical barriers in communication, and the barriers to effective communication. And then as your last step, you're going to, again, as we've already said, you're going to post your bullet list. You only have to have three or four. You only have to have three or four of your bullet list. And we've already gone over these bullet lists. Now, there are different ways that you can post these bullet lists. Let's go to the discussion board here. When you click on Start a New Thread, you can copy and paste your bullet list in. You can add them as an image. If you take a screenshot of them, you can simply drag that screenshot to this box. I think the best way to do it is to add them, add them as an attachment 
So go ahead and create your bullet list in Microsoft Word and you can simply click on that and add the Word document and you'll be all done. Okay, let's go back to our content and quickly review what your assignments are. Click on week one here. Week one, you have primarily two assignments. Both occur in discussion boards. In the first discussion board, you respond to the two videos by following these steps here. Step one, step two, and step three. That's your first assignment. Your second assignment is in the communication analysis preparation submodule. Read the assignment directions. Read the introduction. You can see some samples. You read the PDFs. And after you've read the PDFs, you've got to come up with three to four communication inhibitors and define them in a bullet list. And those bullet lists look like the ones that you've seen here, except they have only three to four. Okay, there's your uh, week one uh, video. I hope that helps to clarify the assignments. Remember, you have simply two discussion boards to respond to. Okay, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to get in contact with me.